Uh, throughout today, we will have a couple of brief sessions, brief, brief speeches, where education leaders and business leaders come up on stage and very briefly present an idea that hopefully not only it sparks some thought on your part, but we know is transforming education and the world and business of education. Um, we call these Visions for Change. And I'm very proud to introduce the first presenter for Visions to Change, Neera Tandon, who is the president and CEO for the Center of Am for Amer American Progress and is a close education and non-education advisor to Hillary Clinton. Please help me welcome Neera. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much. It's a real honor to be here. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, higher education and its place in the policy debates, economic policy debates and public policy debates, and increasingly political debates in our country uh, that I think will loom large over the next year and a half. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some ideas to address issues around college access. Uh, today, uh, we live at a time where uh, the kind of dominant economic discussion is around issues around inequality, stagnant wages, uh, stagnant economic mobility. And for most of our history, we've looked at education, access to education, as vehicles to address many of those challenges. Increasingly, many people see lack of access to higher education as the driver of those ills, stagnant mobility, uh, rising inequality. And that is shaping the public policy debates we're having in, in the country and in the presidential debate we'll have over the next year and a half. Most importantly, when you look across the world uh, at U.S. competitiveness, it has, our, our higher education system has been considered a jewel. Uh, but our graduation rates are a real challenge. And that, that is striking, particularly because college graduates in the U.S. Uh, do so much better economically than people who just go to high school. We're at roughly 3%, 3.5% unemployment for college graduates and above, 12.2% unemployment for people who've just gone to high school. We're the differential between lifetime earnings for people who go to college versus non-college is anywhere between 800000 and a million dollars. So if you're a political leader focused on addressing stagnant wages, social mobility, economic competitiveness, it pretty much drives you to a discussion of higher education relatively quickly. Just to give a sense of where the United States is vis-a-vis -vis our competitors, I think in, in when we discuss higher education in the United States, we often think that our system is the jewel of the world. We attract so many students from around the world, more and more students coming from Asia. But when we look at how our, our kind of returns, what our graduation rates are, you know, this statistic is essentially showing that while we used to do much better in our rankings in terms of college attainment, we're falling behind. And most importantly, uh, we're falling behind other countries. We've moved from fourth to tenth in the world for college attainment for 25 to 34 year olds. That's not because we're doing so much worse, it's because the rest of the world is doing much better. So I think that also helps frame why this debate is so critical moving forward. Especially from a competitiveness perspective, we need more and more college educated people for the workforce that we're going to have, that we're going to need by 2020. It's particularly important for math, the STEMs, other areas that are growing in the economy. They need a college educated workforce to accomplish what, we're, what, we're, what the economy needs overall. But I think what we hear about most on the campaign trail, this translates into, is the costs of college. So uh, college is one of the staple increases that have really gone very high over the last several decades, a 150% increase in college prices. Overall, uh, if you look at what's happening to median, median workers, median family, middle class families, 
they're facing a, a real squeeze right now between stagnant wages and rising costs. Education costs, higher education costs, are one of the big drivers of that squeeze. And again, that's, that's also driving the national debate and discussion. Uh, average debt for a four-year college, for a four-year degree today is $30,000 particularly on the progressive side of the debate, on the democratic side of the debate, student debt is a dominant issue. That's in part because of the debates. Uh, that's, I tried to get all 72 people running for president into one graph and have not been able to do that. Uh, so let me just say a few words about the ideas percolating in the debate today. Uh, if to, to, to really separate the discussion, I think you can say college access to college is an increasing issue priority. Uh, it is something all candidates, both Democrats and Republicans, hear about on the camp campaign trail, and they are responding in a variety of ways. There's really two responses, if I could divide them all out. One set of responses is about making college much more affordable for middle-class families. Another one, another set of responses is to try to disrupt college itself, focus on making college more uh, cheap, college cheaper for people directly. That ranges from criticizing universities as bloated, inefficient organizations, sort of more of the Chris Christie line, Marco Rubio focuses on allowing greater disruption by making it easier for new entrants, basically making it easier for people to offer a college-like product. Uh, Jeb Bush really focuses on the inefficiencies of college, uh, how his, his, his line has been that um, essentially uh, college students are working on the French work rule. They're not working hard enough. They could graduate faster. It's inefficient that way. Uh, Rand Paul has offered ideas about making college tax free, basically tax deductible. Uh, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders and Martin O'Malley, I just couldn't get his picture in there, but uh, Martin O'Malley uh, all focus on making college itself much more affordable for uh, for families. So Hillary has offered an idea around debt-free tuition, uh, which basically she, her proposal is to have a college compact in which uh, essentially the federal government enters in compacts with states and universities. Federal government will, will basically help make college tuition free, heavily subsidized college tuition. In exchange, states have to offer up some level of funding, and colleges themselves have to commit to making, uh, to not driving up their price. So it is, it is really a compact model. Bernie Sanders heavily subsidizes uh, college tuition itself, basically wants to make college debt free by investing $70 billion a year in college uh, and having states invest as well. Essentially, though, I think we'll see a debate where higher education, access to higher education, is becomes more and more central. On the Democratic side, uh, it worked in previous campaigns. Uh, healthcare is kind of one big social change that Democrats were discussing. Really, college has supplanted that now. Access to higher education will be probably the area in which the Democrats invest the most level of resource because of the issues that families are facing, the issues that millennials are facing with their debt, but also because higher education is the one avenue over the long term where significant investments have meant greater economic mobility. And honestly, I think we know more and more today that lack of investment, you know, the previous panel referenced how much California has pulled out. The fact that states have so pulled out of higher education is leading to a system where we have less and less economic mobility because it's a greater and greater challenge, particularly for low-income students, to get access to really go 
to college and feel like they can afford it with the tuitions that they're facing. Uh, CAP itself has a particular idea w which is modeled on Australia, which is to a little simpler than many of these, which is to simply have debt-free tuition for everyone, basically t free tuition for everyone that is people pay out of their income that they make over their lifetimes. It's kind of a pay it, for mo pay it forward model. But I think the reality is that as we, as we look forward to the debate over the next uh, year and a half, and uh, the, the several hours of debates we'll have on both sides, last night did feel like 10 hours to me, but um, you'll s I think these issues will grow in importance because truthfully, in tax policy and other areas, while it may not seem that they're always talking about stagnant wages, in reality, that is percolating throughout the discussion. So thank you all very much.